What's going on YouTube? David coming at y'all with another video of BBTY. Now, today's topic is something that's personal to me and the title of today's video is called Don't Quit. Now, what I'm talking about Don't Quit is is a situation that, you know, you guys could be going through something right now and quitting seems like that's the best option to do and it seems like everywhere you turn like that's just the option that's right in front of your face is to quit but basically i'm coming here to tell you guys to don't quit you know even though quitting may seem like that's the best thing to do but don't quit if you know this is really what you want then don't quit keep fighting keep pushing because eventually the the hard times it won't last forever they will end soon there's always a silver lining to a bad situation so you guys always should you know continue to work hard and push push yourselves you know and so i really want to tell y'all something about myself and what i mean like don't quit from you know from i guess you can say back my freshman year of college uh i've been always trying to play football always wanted to play division one football always wanted to get a scholarship and a division one university but Fresh out of high school, I wasn't recruited. I was one of those guys that was kidding, like undersized. You know, I was always overlooked because you know, I was short. And I got made fun of because of my height. But football was a passion for me, so I just never quit it. And basically, so fresh out of high school, I went to Western Illinois University. Uh, I tried to walk on there, actually, but I didn't make it because, uh, yeah, I didn't make it because the coach said that they weren't, they weren't looking for any running backs, so basically, you know, I had to sit out a year. I missed one year of college football. So I sat out a semester. He told me to come back in the spring semester and try out again. So, you know, I was a little devastated when he first told me this, but I still had that passion in my heart, and I didn't quit. So I kept pushing, I kept pushing, you know, I kept working out, staying in shape. And then springtime came around. So when the spring came around, I was excited. I knew I was going to make it because I'm a little senior's leaving. I'm like, Spots got to be open on the team now. This is my shot. This is my time. I know I'm going to make it. So I went to go try out. And eventually, after tryouts, the coach talked to me. He was like, you know, you did real good. And, you know, you're a good player. We could definitely use somebody like you. But he told me after that, he said, uh, he said, but unfortunately, numbers-wise, you know, we're still full on the roster. So we can't we can't take you in. We can't, we can't use you on the team. But he offered me an equipment position. Now, when he offered me a quick equipment position, he asked me, you know, he's like, be equipment manager, help the team set up for practice and, you know, travel with the team and, you know, just get their shoulder pads and helmets and everything ready for them. But to me, that, when he told me that, that was devastating. Like, you know, I cried. I, you know, I didn't know what to do with myself. It was, it, was, it was a low point for me. But I knew down, deep down within my heart that I still had it. I still had a talent in me and I could still play this game. I could still play football at whatever level that I chose to. So after that, I went to a prep school. I decided to go to a prep school. It's called Midwest Prep. Now, Midwest Prep now, keep in mind, I'm in my sophomore year and I'm playing with, you know, guys that's like fresh out of high school, but they haven't joined college. It's a prep school. So I'm playing with them. You know, I'm glad I got that opportunity. And I, and I got to play with a, a good friend of mine you know we still buddies to this day he know what I'm talking about but we played together at Midwest Prep now at Midwest Prep I wasn't even starting I was uh I guess you can say like we had like seven running backs and I guess because the coaches didn't know me I wasn't recruited for Midwest Prep I basically walked on so I was like bottom of the depth chart type person so I was like seven string running back and I told my coach, I said, Coach, look, I may be seven string right now, but I promise you I'm going to play. Like, I'm going to get that starting position. So it may not either be today, it may not be tomorrow, it may not be next month, but eventually I'm going to get that starting position. So I held tight. I kept doing my due diligence. I kept fighting. I kept pushing on. And eventually I got that starting spot. It, it became mine. You know, other guys messed up, you know, some, and I just outworked everybody else. And I finally got my starting spot. And I knew I told myself if I don't quit, then, man, I was going to get my opportunity to play. Now, the prep school is just like a halfway halfway type school to where other schools can get to see you go to colleges. So when I finally I get my 
I get my starting spot, and the coach tell me that week that, hey, look, you're going to be starting in this week's game. Be prepared. So, I'm, I mean, I'm prepared. I'm, you know, I'm learning my plays. I'm, I'm getting everything down. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, you know. So, we had practice on Wednesday. Now, keep in mind, I'm getting my first college, technically it was my first college career start. I'm, I'm pushing. I'm ready for it. I'm doing good in practice. One play, I'm in practice. I break a good run. It was about like a 60-yard run. And I got tackled. And I was fine. You know, I got it was a little dazed, but I was cool. So then the next play, you know, unfortunately, I had an injury. Now, this injury knocked me out, basically. It was supposed to knock me out for the rest of the season. We only had, like, five games? Yeah. No, we had four games left. We had four games left. And... So basically, I dislocated my shoulder when I had that injury. So I went to the doctor and he told me that I should be out for like six to eight weeks because it was a bad dislocated shoulder or whatever. And at this point, I'm, I'm devastated. Like, you know, I finally get my college career started. I dislocated my shoulder. I'm like, man, what, what's going on? Why is it, why is bad things always happening to me? And I'm telling myself like, like man, it's just, it's just all bad. And at this point, like, you know, I really wasn't talking to a lot of people. You know, so I was, like, by myself, only had, like, you know, one or two people I could kick it with. You know, they were close friends, and we still cool to this day. They, like, brothers to me now. But, you know, at the time, like, I mean, I was devastated. I couldn't play, you know. It was it was just bad. It was real bad for me. And, you know, I was crying and everything. And I'm trying not to cry in front of my mama. But, you know, when you got love for the game, when you love something that you really want to do, and it seemed like everything bad keep happening to you, no matter what you try to do, like, you know, you can't help but cry, so crying in front of my mom and the doctor was trying to offer me he was like hey you know I know a flag football team where you know you could play and everything and it you know you could still have football but you know you just you know if you don't get recruited you know after this then you know you can always still play flag football so that hurt my heart even more so now I'm just like man flag football I went from getting offered an equipment position to flag football I'm like oh my god man like at that point I wanted to quit so bad like I'm telling myself, I'm like, I'm sitting in my room one night, and like, I was just, I was bawling tears, I was crying, I was crying, I was crying, and I didn't know what to do, and uh, I called up from one, this was, you know, it was a friend of mine or whatever, I called him up, and I just needed somebody to talk to, so I told him, and at that point, like, it was at a crossroad where either I could have just stopped playing football, just focused on school and said, whatever, I'll leave it alone, it's not for me. Or I could have dug deep and still focus on my dream and keep doing what I really wanted to do. And I was to play Division One football. And, I mean, I was still crying. But the more I started to cry, the more I started to get inspired to really push and tell myself that I could do this. Because I put in so much time and effort that I could do it. So, now, you know, after I get done crying... I tell myself, you know what, I'm going to push it. I'm going to get my shoulder back right. I'm going to carry if, if my shoulder not fully healed, but I'm going to get back on the field. So, you know, I was out for basically three three weeks. I came back a little early. I was nervous, but I got me a shoulder brace. I was good. Then, you know, we, and then the coach told us they added an extra game on to, uh, to the schedule. So we got, a, you know, we got an extra game, so I got to play in that game. I was happy, and unfortunately, I didn't get recruited out of the school Midwest prep so you know now I'm just uh now I'm just sitting there looking like man what am I gonna do now okay I don't I don't have a school you know I just play out in dislocate I got a dislocated shoulder don't nobody want to pick me up now so eventually I found a school it was called Concordia University Chicago so I get to Concordia and I mean I'm excited you know Man, I get to play football again. It's Division Three. Hey, I mean, I'm humble, so I was okay with it. I'm like, I finally get to play football. So I go through a, a whole spring semester there, did good, and then uh, I get to the fall season. Now, I had a great fall camp and everything, and now, so once I get to the fall football season come around, I was third, I was third string running back. They told me I could have started, but because we had uh, two senior running backs ahead of me that, you know, it was – they had to play before me, which was, I understood. I'm like, you know, when they leave, it's going to be my turn. So, first game of the season, both of them got hurt. So, now it was my turn. You know, they called me in. I mean, unfortunately, it was like the last few minutes left of the game. But they called me in there, and 
you know, I'm now I'm just I'm moving the ball. I'm getting us to where we need to get. And the coach tell me, man, you know, be ready for next week, cause your time's coming. It, it's here, you know. You better you better be ready. So I'm, I'm telling myself, I'm like, man, wow, man, I have dislocated my shoulder and been through hell and back. I'm thinking it's over. I'm thinking I'm good now. I finally get to play college football and be happy. So now this is the second game of the season. I finally get my next college career start. Second time I started in college. I get my get my start, you know, third play of the game, dislocate, messed up my ankle. They said it was a bad ankle sprain, almost broke my ankle. So I was out for six games. Yeah, no, not six games. I was out for five games. And at that point, I was, oh, man, like, I, I just didn't know what to do. I'm, like, I'm in the same position again. Like, I I wanted to quit yet again. Like, it was it was a wrap for me. Like, I, I just thought that it was not meant to be. I couldn't do anything. But, you know, I tried to come back. I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't even walk on my ankle. Like, it was terrible. Like, you know, when I dislocated the shoulder, it was terrible. When I dislocated, when I messed up my ankle, it was bad. So, so now, you know, I... Missed pretty much most of the season. I got to come back the last two games after the season, but you know the coach didn't put me in because they didn't want to risk any more in it. They didn't want to risk any more injuries with me, so I said, you know, it's okay, whatever. But I knew deep down inside that there was something out there better for me. So I really didn't enjoy myself at the school, so I decided to leave. And I had a meeting with my coach, and he, you know, he just told me straight up, like, look, you know, you really didn't get to play at a Division three. You know, if you transfer, you're not going to play football anywhere else. Like, this is, it's a wrap for you. You know, it's over with. So, I'm like, damn, like, you know, that, that shit, it hurt my heart to hear something like that. But, man, like, when I heard that, like, the more people started to doubt me, the more I got inspired. And I told myself, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep pushing through. So, then I get to, uh, after I decided to leave, I found myself a trainer. I started pushing. I started pushing. And I'm emailing schools. I'm doing my own. I'm trying to get myself recruited. I'm doing it all on my own. So I'm sending out emails, calls. I mean, the whole nine yards. Eventually, I get a, I send out an email and I get a response from a Division One university. It's FCS, but that's perfectly fine with me. A Division One university, and they told me come down, try out, you know, come out and try out. So I said, hey, I, I was on the first thing down there. You know, Southern University down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I get out here, and the coach tell me, you know, you can try out. That's nothing, nothing's guaranteed. But I'm like, I took that chance on life. And basically, back to my first video, when I say, you know, you just got to make that move. You can't be scared. So I did it. And sure enough, I'm here. Like, I'm, I'm playing Division One football. And that's, that's basically what I want to tell y'all. Like, no matter how bad everything seems in life, like, you can get through it. So I know I always tell myself, like, if I can get through everything that I've been through, like, it's you it's possible for you to get through. And like I think for me, like I'm humble because I'm a walk on here at a division one university and I already know I don't get anything. Every I have to work for everything. Nothing is given to me. So I'm proud of the accomplishments that I made so far. But basically like in life, don't worry about how bad things are, don't worry about you know how everything seems terrible and like you just really want to quit but don't quit like just keep pushing it's you can always get through whatever you get in through just hold on and hold steady and keep pushing like hold on to your faith whatever you got like deep down inside of you you can get through it you have to tell yourself every day no matter how bad it is how bad my situation look i can get through this and i will make it in life and so if it's a job or if it's sports if it's anything I'm telling y'all that personally I know you can get through it if I can get through it you can get through it so I believe in y'all don't quit on yourself don't quit on me don't quit on your family and remember that self tell yourself I can I will I must and that's something I got from Eric Thomas and, you know that's a really good motivational speaker to me and like I hold that near and dear to my heart and you guys should do the same believe in yourself you can get through it I know you can and I'll be listening to you guys soon I'll be talking to y'all soon so be on the lookout.